So one of the phrases that you hear a lot in relation to Ireland and especially Dublin is the housing crisis. And you hear stuff about housing crisis in different countries, in different cities. So we wanted to understand better why is there a housing crisis, what does it look like and how does it affect people. And we realized it's not actually that easy to find information about it because usually news articles assume you already have all the background info. So if you're an expert trying to you know, understand what's going on here or even if you're just curious, it's a bit hard to find information. So we thought, let's be nerds. Well, I decided. <laughs> and to do a lot of research so we could do a video for you guys to try and explain a bit more, like, what is the housing crisis in Ireland? What does it look like? How does it affect different people? What are the reasons it happened in the first place? And what are some potential solutions to help it? So I know it's gonna be a bit of a longer video, but we hope you enjoy it. And if you like this kind of content, do make sure to subscribe. We do videos twice a week. And let's get started. So who is affected by the Dublin housing crisis? The honest answer, everyone. What happens is we're all paying these rising rents. That equates to less money to go to our savings. In some cases, people are even neglecting to do important things like doctor's visits or checkups in order to have enough money in the bank every month so you could make your rental payment. Unfortunately, this means that there are less and less people actually able to save up for a deposit for a home of their own. Naturally, it's worse for people on lower incomes. This is simply not something that's very feasible. This is also true of people on zero hour contracts. Anything where at the end of the day, just even meeting rent would be a challenge. This of course leads into that cycle of homelessness as well. Of course, when you can't make your rental payments, this ends up in eviction. This creates a cycle where if you don't have the money to pay at the end of the month, you get evicted and then you're there looking for more accommodation, but you couldn't afford accommodation in the first place. So you're stuck. Fortunately, the government does have a program for this with emergency housing, but that also has its own problems. The challenge is that you, the current emergency housing, that's a lot of hotel rooms, which People, you can't stay in there for long. It's not a livable situation, a family and such, especially with children being stuffed into a room. We've all gone on vacation and seen what a hotel room is like. Try living on that for your everyday task. Very difficult, wouldn't it be? Unfortunately, Dublin doesn't have a big social housing stock. It's not like cities like Vienna, where that's a sizable stock. And because of that, there is very little space for actually affordable housing. There's also one group of people that we want to talk about in more detail. And that is people coming to Dublin for the first time. It could be that you're moving from the countryside or you're moving from another country like we know a lot of reviewers are. Now, what a lot of people have told us and something I kept repeating as I was researching this video is that people are in spite of reading everything about the housing crisis, still surprised at how expensive rents actually are and how easily they can increase. And another aspect of this is that oftentimes the actual rent gets downplayed by employers or language schools who are interested in bringing people to the city and don't necessarily care that much if you're then struggling to meet that rent. So I have to admit, we maybe also kind of actually did a bit fall into that ourselves. We knew Dublin was an expensive city, but we'd lived in, in London before, so we were like, oh, we can deal with an expensive city, we've, we know what that's like, like, we've paid ridiculous amounts to go to the cinema, we'll find a way to deal with that. But actually the situation is very different than it is in London. In London, everything's kind of expensive, cinema, food, the tube, rent, everything, but the salaries also usually match those expenses. So if you live in London, your salary on average is quite a lot higher than in other parts of the UK where the living costs are much cheaper. Now the same thing isn't quite true for Dublin. And a big issue about that is, in, while in London the costs and the salaries have been relatively stable, I don't know what Brexit is doing to either of those, but let's just say it's been relatively stable over the last years or decade or so. Meanwhile in Dublin, it's not been very proportionate. 
salaries have not increased that much, but rent has increased a lot. So for example, if you live in a rent pressured zone, your rent can be increased by a maximum of 4%, which more means like usually it's increased by a min the minimum or like the maximum. It'll be increased the full 4%. But at the same time, your salary doesn't usually grow 4% per year unless you have very good strategies for negotiating your, your salary or if you're lucky. It usually doesn't happen. So you have rent increasing, increasing really rapidly, but the salaries aren't. And it's just a big disparity that keeps growing and growing. Another aspect which can drive up your rent is that if you have to move, so it could be that let's say the flat you live in, your landlord needs it for a family member or because they need to move in themselves or they want to sell it or renovate it, they can have you move out. So suddenly you need to look for a new flat. You're back in the market and you need to find a flat at market value, which means your rent is going to go up dramatically versus if you had been able to stay in the same flat. So again, the rent can increase very quickly, but your salary isn't going to be increasing in the same proportion. And that can be quite frustrating and we know a lot of expats and also a lot of Irish people who talk a lot about wanting to move abroad and wanting to move to other cities because it's very hard to keep up with that lifestyle. In order to combat the housing crisis, there have actually been a few suggestions by experts. Some have been implemented, some of them not yet, that we're hoping for, that we'll be able to combat this. Uh, one of the things uh, the wine just mentioned is actually the 4% cap on rental increases. That means there are areas about the Dublin area of districts, region really, where landlords can't raise the rent more than 4% per year. Of course, since 4% is the cap, everyone's been raising it at exactly 4%. We're actually in one of those areas, so we've been expecting our rent to rise 4% year on year. Naturally, one of the solutions would have to be building more houses. But not just homes that are for sale that, as we've seen, a couple of neighborhoods have popped up where the homes are for sale and they're gone, you know, within a month or so, even less, long lines. But housing that's affordable and also social housing, good rental prices that people of all walks of life would be able to afford. Another idea that's been floated around is the introduction of a rent register. Especially as expats or people who aren't new to an area, what may happen is that you may come to an area, uh, area property and realize, okay, this is what the price of the property is. With a rent register, you'll be able to see what the previous tenant pay, has paid to know if there has been an unfair price increase, therefore allowing you to make a bit better decisions of whether you want to actually live in that place for that price or if you would like to go somewhere where the price will be more affordable towards your pocket. Another thing that's a bit more controversial as well is a cultural shift in the way Dublin is actually planning out its properties. Usually when stuff expands to the suburbs, we have a nice house with some garden, parking space, etc. Lots of people have preferred to actually own their home. Another model is that within the city centre, we actually increase the building heights so that we can build more high rises for residential, not just for high end luxury apartments, but for where it is a lot more affordable for people to live. This, of course, was a pretty much a cultural shift. It would change the way that the look and feel of Dublin. That's why it's a bit of a controversial solution. But it's still one that's on the table that may help with the continued urbanization of especially the center of Dublin. Another thing that's being considered is the increasing of tenants' rights and the enforcement of them. Dublin, in comparison to some European cities, especially those more Germanic cities, there isn't as strong tenants' rights as those cities, so therefore being able to enforce those for the small percentage of errant landlords would be beneficial for those people who are trying to afford somewhere to live and lessen the amount of evictions that would happen that are unjust and unfairly ruled out upon people. So talking about the different causes and effects it has on people with this housing crisis can be quite frustrating. So let's also look at some of the good news around the housing stories. What is some progress being made? Well, some companies that are, as some say, kind of part of the reason the housing crisis is ex escalating, 
big tech companies like Google are have decided to try and do their part in alleviating the problems with the housing crisis and they've pledged to help build more housing. How that exactly will go, we'll have to see, but at least it's something, it's a start. There is also new policies being introduced, so for example this year they introduced that Airbnbs are only allowed to rent out the entire house 90 days of the year. You can still rent out a room in your house, however long you like, but if it's the entire property it's limited to 90 days per year. And that should help that the rest of the year this place can actually be used to live in on a more permanent basis or bring people more towards renting their places on a long-term basis than just via Airbnb or similar short letting platforms. And another big success is that the Dublin City Council, they've been trying really hard to negotiate with developers that for developing new apartment, office, student housing, whatever complexes, they also have to put a certain percentage of social housing into those complexes. And a recent win was that the Dublin City Council actually managed to get the developers to promise that it'd be around 80% of affordable housing in oh, Devony Gardens. I'm not sure that's how you pronounce it, but there are people making, trying to make a difference. They're working hard, trying to solve this crisis and change all the dynamics that are at play here. So if you would like to know even more about the housing crisis, we'll link to some resources below. There is the blog article I wrote up about this entire video where I'll find all the sources to the things we talked about. I'll also leave a link to RTB, which is the tenants board and that's the go-to place for you if your rent is being increased in a way it shouldn't be or you're being evicted for unfair reasons. That's where you can go and ask them to help you resolve the issue. We'll also link to some of the charities that are active in Dublin and Ireland to help homeless people or people who are in danger of losing their home if you want to donate or if you know someone who's in need of help. Yes, and we also have our own solution. What we're working on is a website that lets you figure out where to live in Dublin. What we're doing is we're having a list of the general Dublin districts and how much it costs per bedroom to live in these areas. So even before you come you can have a better idea of what you're in for and where you may want to live. If you like this video why not give it a like and be sure to comment with your own feelings on this topic or if you're moving to Dublin what you're afraid of or any questions you have about this rental housing crisis. There's also now a Facebook group that we'll link to below in the comments and you can also write us there and get a discussion going. So we hope to see you next week in our next video. Yep, see you soon. This is Ram out and... The wine, bye. Bis später. Bye.